Hello everyone, Andrew here, and welcome back to Donkey Kong Country 2, the Lost Levels, where last time we started off World 3, and this time we're going to continue it. I don't know about finishing it off, although I do know that we're definitely going to get very close with three interesting levels coming up, the first of which is Wastewater Walk. And this level is actually of the volcanic nature, but this time with the kind of bog music going on. Where in the last world we had a bog level with the volcano music going on. So see, that's, you know, some, <laughs> that's some, you know, innovative use of resources. Just swap them and consider it done. But no, I actually think it's, you know, it's rather interesting. And that's the first time we've seen, I think, the red version of that guy who moves very fast and... Uh, we managed to deal with him there, but he gets very annoying in the later levels where it's like, oh yeah, I can just walk forward without worrying about anything, and then that guy comes and ruins your day. Also, I totally jumped on that person, you know, properly, and still took damage for it, so not so sure how I feel about that. Tried to jump on that fly, and accidentally grabbed onto the cattail instead, leading to a death. I think the last video started off much like this, where... I was doing very well. Actually, I mean, I was doing the very opposite of very well <laughs> uh, in, in the first few minutes, but then things picked up. So let's actually, you know, remember how to play Donkey Kong here. Like we did in the past. And yeah, see that guy, once again, not too much of an issue now, but just wait till later. But see, yeah, I don't think it was very fair that I took damage from that guy. And see, I think that, I believe that these guys are kind of hacked in enemies. I don't think that they were ever in the original game, ones of that color. So, they seem to be a little bit glitchy. Also, I don't know how I feel about that. That's just camera shenanigans. There was no reason that I should have died there. Of course, being a fan-made project, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, and I think, I mean, you can never go into one expecting such, just because... As the one who didn't actually make the game and is just kind of trying to do things that the game never was meant to do, you're always going to kind of run into opposition when you try to reuse features and such. So. I can kind of let some things slide. Like, I mean, I have enough lives that I'm not too worried about the fact that I just died from trying to get the K. Like, like yeah. I'm not really sure why that just happened, but oh well, I suppose. We can jump down here, though, and there's a barrel in there, but if we go in it, if we go into it, we're definitely going to get hit by the, uh, by the zinger guy there, so... I think it might just be an upwards shot barrel, though, yeah, so... Uh, but the thing is, though, if that were a bonus game, and we got shot out of it and then hit an enemy, I don't think it would count as getting into the bonus game. We would actually have to get into the barrel again, this time timing ourselves properly as not to get hit by any enemies. So, that's kind of interesting, and again, not something that you normally see in the original game. We'll probably encounter that more so in the later levels, but here we go. We got past that rocky start. Still haven't been hit by one of those guys. I'm going to remember the day when we do which, you know, purple squitter, not, not squitter. Um, and I knew their name. Scuttlebug? Something along those lines. Which one will be the first one to deal damage to us? Also, there were some weird kind of banana shenanigans going on there. I think we can get that coin without too much issue. Not that we really need any at the moment. I also see what looks like a barrel down there. Okay, because I thought maybe there was going to be some trick to get to it, but it's actually a cannon, so now we need to find the cannonball, and that's not the kind of behavior I was expecting from that singer. I thought it was just going to go, you know, do a circle all the way around that rock, but that's not what happened. Alright, we got these switches here, which activate the crocodile heads. Can I go back with this now that I've found the, uh... Now that I've found the cannonball, it's flashing. I can't see, though, if it's out of the water. So if we hit that, okay, then we can jump. Okay, it's not the Mario World where you can press L and R to kind of scroll the camera. That's actually a really innovative feature that Mario World had that not many people really talk about. I remember I had a discussion with someone recently about how in Sonic the Hedgehog, you could hold up to scroll the camera up or, or down to scroll it down. But Mario World is actually really smart for inventing a way to scroll the camera left and right, because that's not something that video games typically allow you to do. Yet, if you have, you know, gaps or something that you have to jump over, or you want to see what's coming up in the level, it's a very useful tool to have. So I think that more games could definitely use an L and R, you know, kind of scrolling the camera like that. Even, I don't even think that the new Super Mario Brothers games have that, but I mean, they're widescreen now, so I guess, you know, widescreen, I guess, is kind of eliminated that issue altogether. 
But in the same vein, I mean, it's not like the one, uh, the DS one had it or anything either. Oh, so lucky we had, uh, we had Dixie, so that we could ride in that barrel, though it actually wasn't for anything significant, it was just for the end. Hopefully we have a chance to get Diddy back, or else our streak of beating levels with different characters, or with, you know, the specific characters is totally going to be ruined. It doesn't really feel like there's probably going to be any more DK barrels coming up, though. I mean, I, of course, as it's a ROM hack, DK barrels, whoa, aren't going to be in particularly high demand. It definitely doesn't feel like we should be at the end yet. Okay, so there's something going on there, but we totally need an animal. Oh, not, not, not an animal, buddy. Totally need Diddy to help us get it. Can we get Diddy anywhere? Hmm. If I go into the bonus game, then when I come back out, we should be able to get the DK barrel that's by the checkpoint. But wow, that's the last DK barrel that they actually give you. It's like way back at the midway point. Interesting. Oh no! Wow, I totally just did exactly what I was talking about not too long ago, and that is get destroyed by somebody on the way to a bonus game. Interesting! I didn't even consider that we had actually defeated him the first time, therefore it didn't matter. Also, I realized that I also did something that I said I wasn't going to do, and that was run back and look for the Kong that I wanted to beat the level with, although the actual reason that we did that was because I needed the Kong to find a secret, so... I mean, I, total I technically didn't break the rule that I had set out for myself, but wow! Yeah, I didn't even really think about the fact that we killed him with a TNT barrel the first time. But uh, there you go. So we actually need to make sure that we hang on to both Kongs now here on out because we need them both in order to get a secret that is hidden past the end. I believe we have all of the bonus games. So I think we're just looking for the DK coin at this point and it seems very likely that past the end of the level is probably where it is hidden. Also, we have the uh, sprites kind of spawning in and out, which is rather interesting. Uh, it's funny that bananas do that too, which I guess indicates that they are sprites and not objects, unlike coins in like a Mario game, which are objects rather than sprites. There we go. That is totally not what I wanted to do. Although, hilariously, we're going to be able to beat the level with Diddy Kong now, so... <laughs> it is what it is! There's the G, and oh, we missed the N after all that. That's right, the N was inside of that barrel that only Disky... Uh, that, that only Disky... That is her new name, that only uh, Dixie could enter. Also, I like how he didn't run into the cave, but totally just ran through the rock there. Yeah, so all the bonus games, just gotta do one quick run through to get that DK coin. So let's go! Okay, not sure why it was so difficult for me to get to the end of this level with two Kongs, but there we go. All right, should we, so we should be able to go up here, and on the other side we discover the DK coin just as we were expecting, and ha! I see what you tried to do there. It was trying to ambush us when we were least expecting it, also we totally, I think, could have just start selected out of the level now, but we might as well, I guess, get a prize anyway. For a second, it looked like we were going to get nothing, but no, we totally got 10 bananas. I definitely like that about the Donkey Kong Country games, where once you find something, you can just start select out of the level. I'm really not a fan of the current trend of once you find an item, you then have to replay the entire level, you know, to save it. Especially if it's hidden, like, right at the beginning. It's like, ugh. <laughs> Especially, you know, I mean, even the uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns games follow that kind of mentality, but particularly I always think of like the new Super Mario Brothers games when I think of something that uses that. I don't think we actually had to go up there though. We could have totally run through the boat, but going on top reveals a secret. This is usually Rattlesnake Battle, the one where you turn into Rattly for the entire level, but it has been repurposed as just a general ship level, even playing the original ship music. Also, this is totally the room that you enter when you do the warp barrels <laughs> in the ship levels repurposed as a bonus game which is rather interesting of course they were able to put stars kind of at the top of the screen because i don't think that you can get in here if you don't have both kongs anyway this is kind of an interesting use of them both i suppose up to 30 bonus coins also i like the color of the water in the background it's, it really screams like this is a sunset i'm very impressed by many of the palette changes that were made in this hack because i mean Arranging the level geometry is already kind of, you know, one thing which I think is rather difficult to do well. But getting colors also that look nice. I have to give them definitely kudos for that. Also, having both Kongs is very nice for being able to destroy those guys. Again, this is kind of an interesting use of these kind of platforms where they have a, you know, a kind of mast. And then they place the wood on top. It looks 
out of place, yet not out of place at the same time. Obviously, again, a way that they were never intended to be used. But I can't say I think it looks overly terrible either. What do you guys think? I think it actually looks pretty snazzy. Almost reminds me more of some of the uh, things you get in Donkey Kong Land 1 on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, not on the, on the original Game Boy, rather. Not the Game Boy Advance, where there was uh, levels where you had to climb up the mast of a ship. That was rather interesting. Donkey Kong Land 1 overall is just a very interesting game. I don't think we're supposed to go through there. Totally see the cutoff. But yeah, unlike Donkey Kong Land uh, 2 and 3, which follow not exactly the same, of course, but very similarly to their Super Nintendo counterparts, Donkey Kong Land 1 had absolutely no idea what it was doing, and it feels very interesting, or very similar, rather, to Super Mario Land 1, where it just had no idea what it was doing. It's very different from every, Mario, uh, every other Mario game. And then Super Mario Land 2 definitely had a lot of Mario World vibes going on. Um, okay, okay, so we can go in here. <laughs> Wasn't too sure what I was expecting there for a second. Oh, this is a terrible combination. That guy who's going to throw a hook at your face mixed with the box throwing guy, but looks like we figured out how to deal with him there. Also, we got these guys who normally just climb like ropes and chains and stuff, but the, the creator of this hack made them climb all sorts of background objects, which I, I can't say that's, you know, too bad of a move. And there is a second bonus game of this level. Find the token. Okay, I can't say can't say it was too well hidden. That's one of those ones where it's like, ugh. But still, it's more creative than the bonus rooms in Donkey Kong uh, Country Returns. So I guess you know you get you get some points for effort in that regard. But yeah, it's, it's like there wasn't too much of a of a finding going on there. It was kind of right in your face. And also we have these guys shooting barrels. Of course, it's much better when they shoot barrels rather than the cannonballs. At least you can jump on the barrels to get them out of the way. Also, I believe, again, this is a conversation that we had in a previous part about where things are hidden. And in this case, it's just down an arbitrary hole. I guess the hint is supposed to be that it's the one hole that doesn't have an arrow barrel. But I remember playing through this one a number of times on my first playthrough, looking for that, before I finally said, okay, well, I guess I'll just start trying holes. And again, I think that there, there's, if you think about it, a little bit of an indication or a hint towards that, but it definitely doesn't feel like, like super in your face about it. And all, all the bonus games in this level were kind of just hidden up in the sky, which isn't the worst place to hide bonus games. I guess it's better than hiding it down a ran, uh, you know, an arbitrary, Hole, as it could be said. Okay, so this one, you just gotta go up to the top. And then the camera tries to go back down, but then it doesn't, so then you gotta get all the stars at the top. Again, those weird camera shenanigans, which I feel like if I made a Donkey Kong Country 2 hack, which I could probably not do, because it'd probably be very difficult, the camera would probably be the one thing that annoyed me more than anything. So, with that said, we have two TNT barrels down here, and they're both actually just, you know, those guys. And we use them to destroy each other. This level actually doesn't feel as difficult as some of the other ones that we've played up to this point. <laughs> which is kind of funny. The worst, the most difficult level so far is probably the Blue Tail Trouble in World 2. Although the difficulty is definitely ranking, uh, you know, ramping up a little bit. What do we want here? Also, we want to beat it with Diddy. What did we beat the last level with, now that I think about it? Huh. Did I totally break my rule? I might have accidentally broken the rule. Let's see, we have a, you know, we have a 50-50% chance. You at home probably already know if I broke my rule. Did we beat it with Diddy or did we beat it with Dixie? Oh, we beat it with Diddy! Okay, actually, I think that's right, we beat it with Diddy the first time, and I was thinking about the second time we played through it, who did I beat it with? Okay, okay, I'm just totally, totally losing it here, but I think that the next level should make up for all of that, and that is the Swamp Scramble, which is the absolutely most crazy level you have ever seen, because you just suddenly, you know, jump on a car, and suddenly we're driving through the swamp. It's like Grand Theft Swamp going on here. <laughs> this is, this is such a bizarre level, and I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's not something that I was really expecting. It's funny to think that the car does not only run on rails. I mean, I think that's typically something that you only see. There might be the rare case in the original game where you can jump on top of, like, a platform that's not a rail. I'm thinking of some of the bonus games that you find in the third, uh, you know, car rail level. 
inside of that kind of weird library theme that's only used once. But in this case, we're just riding through the swamp like it's nobody's business. And it really does kind of come down to memorization. Where you kind of just need to know what's coming and then jump. And you really kind of just have to make some split decisions. Although, thankfully, 22 lives, I think, should be enough to deal with this without too much of an issue. That does make it- it is really interesting, though, because these are, like, all enemies that you would not normally see while riding on the car. So you, you get to see the interaction of the car and those enemies. Like, there's never TNT barrel guys when you're in the car. Also, that is a- you, know, you have to press the jump button the absolute instant that you touch the platform, and I did not do a very good job of doing that. So far, so good. Okay, again, I think we need to re rethink our strategy for the part with the two TNT guys. Although I'm not sure how else you're supposed to do that, considering that, you know, if I don't jump on the two of them, I'm going to take damage. But if I jump on the two of them, I end up in the swamp. <laughs> so you kind of got to, you know, pick your poison, I suppose. Since we do have two Kongs, I could always just take a hit there. And then I wouldn't have to worry about kind of the instantly jumping after I hit the platform. We'll see about that. So maybe I'll jump on... Okay, actually, this isn't even the part with the two of them. <laughs> All right. All right. And now we're just going to get, you know, our body is going to be run on top of by that guy. Just need to rethink this part a little bit. Okay, so we got over that one. And I don't think... Okay, so we got to jump over this guy. It's not this one. I think it's the next set of two. No, it's not that one. So I always keep losing my- oh, oh, okay, I actually did it. I actually did it that time, okay. I'm not entirely sure what I did differently. Also, a good thing we didn't have to jump there. It kind of just elevated us to the next platform. Yeah, that's weird. These are just, you know, interactions with sprites that were never meant to be made. And yet, here we are, breaking all the rules. Okay, so hopefully let's just make it somewhere without getting hit. Okay. And that takes us into a mandatory bonus game, which I guess if we fail it, we're going to have to replay that part again, so please beat it on our first try. Collect the stars, though. I don't have much faith in this going well. As, uh, you know, as much as I hate to say it. Oh! Oh! Shoot. Now we're going to have to replay the entire level, or the entire first half, the entire first half again, I suppose, to get that. Ugh. Okay. Anyway, let's just, uh, you know, we can always edit that out later. I'll just replay it so you don't have to watch my shenanigans, and we'll go right to the bonus game, just as we did in the previous part. But here we are. Suddenly, it is now a Squawks level, and we have hit the bonus, or not the bonus point, the midway point, getting our Kongs back. Again, these are some, uh, you know, enemies I don't think that Squawks normally has to deal with. I'm trying to think if there's ever a time when Squawks deals with the guys who climb on things, though it's not coming to mind. Lots of bananas to get here. But I think we're doing pretty well for lives. Not sure what this one's all about. Yeah, this one, again, they're trying to, you know, give reason for there being a floating platform here. I already did mention in another part how D uh, Donkey Kong definitely doesn't have, the, you know, like the floating platform variety like Super Mario has. You can just place a block or a floating cloud anywhere and, you know, make a platform. But in Donkey Kong Country 2, everything has to kind of look like something. And when you're trying to build unique levels, sometimes you gotta build things that, I guess, don't look like something. I don't know if that makes any sense. But here we go. We lost squawks, but you do need to be careful. It's actually kind of tricky. You might not think that you can go under the kind of no squawk sign and get that DK coin. Of course, you're, you're naturally probably going to miss it the first time that you encounter it. But once you know it's there, you're never going to forget. It's kind of like, I guess, the gold tape in Mario World, where you, can, you can't go over it no matter how high you go, but you can go under it. Uh, and that's, of course, how you find the secret exit in Butter Bridge. No, not Butter Bridge. Uh, it's Cheese Bridge that has that kind of secret exit. Anyway, this is not Super Mario World. This is Donkey Kong Country 2 The Lost Levels, and I'm going to get back to that point that we were at, and I'll see you in a second. I wonder if we just jump over this. Okay, there's the DK coin. <laughs> we can just totally walk into the bonus game, so there's absolutely no reason for that car to be there, I guess. It's an interesting effect. 
but it's it's utterly it's uh, you know ultimately pointless I suppose. So this one is just find the token, so you don't have to worry about collecting any stars. Bounce on those guys. Do we need to jump anymore? This is just kind of you know, like a nice stroll. <laughs> you know, just 10 minutes of not really doing anything, but it's interesting because it still keeps you on the edge of your seat in anticipation that something is probably going to happen, even though it ultimately never does. Okay, so let's try our best to beat this. We got all the Kong letters, so that's going to be a free life every single time we get the G then. So I mean, we don't need to worry about lives really too much anyway. And there you go. Do we get another bonus game? Oh, that's just literally the end of the level. It doesn't even end with... A target or anything. Wow. I didn't know that that was even a thing that you could do. I totally forgot. So with that said, I think we have everything in Swamp Scramble except that one bonus game. So we're going to go back and get that now. And that is just such an awkward... Oh no, and I beat it with Dixie! No! Run ruined. That's it. I'm deleting the game. This Let's Play is over. Goodbye, everybody. Okay, so we still made it through that part, even though we took a hit, and I don't think it's too difficult past here. We're just gonna have to worry about beating the mini game, or else we'll have to replay the entire level. This is just really neat, though. I think it's funny that it's a—I mean, I keep wanting to say a minecart level. Like, what is this level even called? I guess they were technically roller coaster levels. That's what it should be called, not just like the car. Um, but yeah, it's not really a roller coaster here, though. So I guess that's why I want to call it more of a car than a roller coaster. But it's just funny how they kind of created that level there. Ugh, can we make that jump? Yes, we could! Okay, so, you know, the, the middle leaf is totally a trap. You want to make that kind of massive jump there, and if we start select, is that everything? I cannot start select out of the level. That's weird! Yeah, the whole, this whole level is just bizarre, and if we miss that letter, can we go back and get it? No, we can't. That is just strange. Even now, I still cannot start select out of it. I mean, I really don't want to just destroy myself, so we'll just fly over everything. And yeah, darn, shoot, I cannot believe that I beat the level with Dixie, but that's not my fault. I had absolutely no idea that it was just going to throw me out of the level like that. I, you know, I would have expected there to be some kind of way for me to switch to Diddy before the end. But that's, of course, the way the news goes. So, yeah, this was a neat level. Hopefully all of you enjoyed seeing that, and I'm pretty sure that there's more minecart shenanigans coming up later on in the game that totally, you know, are not supposed to be the way that they are. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. I think that's where we're going to end off today with now 100% in all three levels we played. I don't think there's any missing exclamation marks in this world, which is very nice. Hey, Funky, did we get the exclamation marks yet? In the previous world, we have so much money. We might as well go and check. Well, we don't have all of them anyway. No, we don't have the one in Blue Tail Trouble yet. And not Reptile Rise yet either. So yeah, still got some exclamation marks that need to show up later on. But thankfully, things are looking pretty good for World 3. And I think next time, we are going to finish off World 3 with what is the first Brambles level, as you can probably tell based on the name. Nighttime Thorns. I remember it being a pretty good one. So thanks for watching this. I hope you enjoyed all the shenanigans that ensued today and hope to see you next time for more Donkey Kong Country 2, the Lost Levels. So thanks and see you later.